Hines, Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo and Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. Let's wake up the football guys. Wake up here, guys. Wake up. We sit here. Now, forgive me. My clock is off. It is actually off by a day. It's actually 19 days, 10 hours and 50 minutes away from kickoff of the NFL draft. It's hard to believe that the draft is literally that close. We are under three weeks away. And the big question is, what will the Dallas Cowboys do? Now, we've heard the idea that Jerry Jones, you know Jerry. Jerry Jones is enamored. He is infatuated with Kyle Pitts. At least that's the story. Me, I think that's just baffling him with bullshit because that's what Jerry Jones does. I've always said that here it is, Jerry Jones. He's always over here and he's always talking about, you know, I want me some glory holes or, you know, if you're, if you're in a car accident and you don't know your own anatomy, you know, and you cut your wrist off, the, 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 the man who doesn't know his anatomy goes running off the wood and bleeds to death. But the man that does understands you got to put a Band-Aid on it and stop the bleeding and wait for help, okay? You know you're going to get some Jerry Jones quotes. And to me, he's kind of like if you've ever been to a dog track where they have that, that electronic rabbit that's running around the track so the dogs chase it, that's Jerry Jones. You know, we heard that Jerry Jones wanted Johnny Manziel and would do anything, including trading up, to get that guy. Thank God that was not the case. Now, we, of course, heard the stories that Stephen Jones ripped the, car, the draft card away from him. You know, we don't know how, how true that that may or may not be. But, you know, at least it's, it's a great story. It's a great story. So we've heard this week that Jerry Jones was definitely interested in Kyle Pitts and maybe even trading up for him. Well, here's the thing. It's been my thing, and I'm going back through, and very rarely – do you see mega trades into the top five or top 10 um, that end up really looking back and saying, man, that was a great move for us. That ended up being the franchise cha changer. More times than not, it's the team that's on the receiving end that ends up doing better because let's face it, the draft is a crap shoot. Pretty much, I believe uh, I've heard Colin Cowherd say that there's basically a 35% bust rate in first rounders. Um, so the best way you can do well in the draft is by having more picks than anybody else. New England doesn't hit on every hit, on every pick. New England usually has more picks than anybody else. I mean, you're talking about a team that wins the Super Bowl and then turns around and has 12 picks the next year. If you hit on half of them, you got six starters. If you're a team that's traded away a lot of draft capital and you got four picks and you hit on half of them, you only got two. Which is better, six players or two? I'll take the six. And so herein lies the quandary, and I probably mispronounced that. My wife would probably say, what? Quandary, quandary. Yeah, the, the, the dilemma, okay? It's just a damn dilemma for the Dallas Cowboys. I remember us trading up for Morris Claiborne because they said, this guy is a can't-miss player. This guy is the best defender in the draft. This guy immediately makes you better. Yeah. That, that happened for us, didn't it? That happened for us, didn't it? For me, if the opportunity arises... This would be the better thing. Now, let, let's just kind of compare. Let's say, let, let's take what Miami did to get to the number six pick. They ended up trading with San Francisco to get their 12th pick. Okay? So they had the 12th pick. In order for them to get the sixth pick, here's what they did. Let, let's look at it. Okay, so the Eagles, here's what the Eagles got for the sixth pick. They ended up getting to, you know, moving back. They exchanged their picks to the 12th. Also, they picked up a fourth round pick this year and a first round pick the following year. Okay. 
That's a lot to give up to move up six spaces. Okay, so hypothetically, let's say we sit here at 10, okay? We're sitting here at 10 right here, okay? Let's say one of these teams, you're not going to trade with the Eagles, screw the Eagles, or the Giants. The Giants aren't going to jump in front of you for one play. It's not going to happen. The Chargers, the Vikings, um, I'm not sure either of those guys. I think that possibly New England may be looking up in there and thinking, let's go ahead and try and get a quarterback, and maybe they use the Cowboys as a springboard, that they make maybe a trade with the Cowboys to get to 10 and then try and work their way up to the Falcons. That, that's conceivable. Um the Cardinals, I don't know that Cardinals will necessarily reach for somebody, um, but they could go ahead and try and say, let's try and get Kyle Pitts. Uh, the Raiders, uh, Raiders, of course, you know the Raiders love to trade. The Raiders love to trade. So hypothetically, let's say the Raiders traded with us. And if you use kind of that same draft capital formula that's out there, let's say that we end up exchanging picks, okay? So let's say we get the 17th pick, or let's say we get the 15th pick, either one of those, that we back up just a little bit. You know to move up there, it's got to be either a number one the following year or at least a couple of number twos. And let's say we end up taking, you know, a number two, a number three, and number four, just, just hypothetically. Or for this year, okay, we're just for the sake of argument. It still has to be some major compensation. Remember, the Eagles got, they moved back six spaces. They got their number one the next year and their fourth round this year. Let's say we got a couple number twos. That's just like compensation, okay? Patrick Sertan seems to be the guy that everybody says we should get. Or maybe J.C. Horn. We probably would not get Patrick Sertan at 15 or 17. But you may be able to get J.C. Horn. Right? Now, if the Cowboys were to try and trade up to the number four spot, to try and get Kyle Pitts, you're talking about taking our first, probably our second and our first the next year to get that guy. What if the Dallas Cowboys moved back to 15 or 17 because one of the other teams sees a player that will change the narrative for them that that new england says we can work our way up and get one of these quarterbacks and the cowboys draft jc horn at 15 or 17 and now you're sitting on two high second round picks what if you took those two second round picks packaged them up, and traded back in the first round. And then you go for, ooh, my man. Because we're talking about a late first-round pick, the best nose tackle, one technique guy in the draft. Be more. So you could have Kyle Pitts, and no first-round pick in 22. Or you have J.C. Horn, Christian Barmore, and still your number one pick, and possibly an extra pick in there. Which would make the Dallas Cowboys a better team? Kyle Pitts may be a generational player, but I look at it as unless the NFL changes the rules and you can put two quarterbacks and two footballs out there, there's only so many pass catches to be going around. And you still have Zeke Elliott in the backfield. Are we just going to go ahead and just say, you know, damn the torpedo? We're just going to be bombs away? I believe your team gets further ahead by improving on this defense. The numbers don't lie. Tom Brady... Super Bowl champion, 2001 team, scoring defense, six. Super Bowl championship team, 2003, scoring defense, first. Super Bowl championship, 2004, scoring defense, second. Super Bowl championship, 2014, scoring defense, eighth. Super Bowl championship, 2016, scoring defense, first. 
Super Bowl championship 2017, scoring defense 7. Super Bowl championship 2021, scoring defense 8. Until you do something with the defense, this is not a Super Bowl team. I don't care how many offensive superstars you have. I don't care how many points you put. Until you're able to shut some people down, we can't even think about going to a Super Bowl. And this is why trading back, you get a guy like this. And this is what's, I've been literally pounding the table for about the last five or six years about a one technique defensive tackle. The last good one we had was Jay Ratcliffe. And that was for a short period of time. But you go back through the Dallas Cowboys history, Super Bowl winning teams, the defense and dominant players were always there with the great offensive star. And this is where the Dallas Cowboys need to go through and work on this team. To me, you know, Kyle Pitts, that'll grab the headlines. Kyle Pitts will sell the jerseys. But I believe if you can end up, you know, having that draft day, draft scenario where you pull off a Christian Barmore, and J.C. Horn, guys, that would immediately make this defense better with bringing back Gallimore in an offseason, having uh, Antoine Woods in there in that rotation, having Randy Gregory with an offseason and not having to worry about being suspended, having some of the pressure taken off D-Law. That, my friends, is how the Cowboys are going to start dominating. Just think back, you know, I'm going to get out of here because I've, I've got to get get out of here. i got lots of trophies, okay? I've got the last one is being shipped out that's ready. I've got to get some more ready because of uh, Raymond Salas won last night. Um, thanks to Howard Floyd. Um, uh, Big Wizzy. And I can't remember who who else. Uh, I, I got three of them that got to go. No, four of them that got to go out this weekend. So I got work to do. But I want you to understand that the Washington football team won the division mostly out of default, okay? Um, but no, no disrespect to them. But their defense is outstanding. Their defense kept them in games. Their defense is game changers because they can shut people down and they can take away the football. And that defense, they finally learned you can't build one from free agents completely. You got to draft. You got to take high draft picks to get dominant defensive linemen. And that's why that defense of theirs is, is good and why they're a scary team next year. And the Cowboys, hey, you got to get strength against strength on that one, guys. You've got to go ahead and address this defense. All right, so... Hopefully sometime this weekend, we're going to be doing like a test um, test zoom-in call for members live stream just to see how it's working and how it looks in the outdoor studio. Um, maybe later today or tomorrow, but I definitely want to start getting everything tested and seeing how it's looking and stuff in the uh, new setup. And uh, that's all I got for you guys right now. It's probably going to be quiet between now and the draft as the Cowboys hunker down and try and figure out what's what, who's who, and what they're targeting. And uh, we'll just wait and see what happens. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I want to thank you guys for watching. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe for the Sports Report.